you probably got it memorized. Like, you know, you read John chapter 8, and of all of the verses in John chapter 8, this may be uh, the one that you've committed to memory. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, verse 11 is not a big verse, because it is a big verse. But check this out. I know you're familiar with it. Verse 31, chapter 8, he says this, If you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed. Here we go. And you shall know the truth. Finish it. Finish it. Come on. You got it. And the truth shall what? Shall make you free. Isn't that cool? What a, what a powerful statement from Christ. You know, Pilate would say to Jesus, what is truth? Right? He was so, he was so jaded, so cynical, so corrupted by the multiple philosophies and religions probably that he had been exposed to. So cynical from his experiences in life as a politician. I mean, if anybody can say uh, that they're probably, if anyone believes that truth is not real, it's probably the politician because they're making it up as they go along all the time, right? Out of one side of their mouth, they'll make this declaration that something is true. And then out of the other side, they'll say something completely different. But the words of Christ, you know, we're, we're kind of tying a circle here. We started in John chapter 7. We're talking about the words of Christ and the doctrine of Christ. And, and where, el where else can we go? Who else has the words of life? We're kind of capping that off now. It's really been the theme for these two chapters. And so he, he like lays down the lumber here. And he says something so powerful about God's truth that when we know his truth, when we know it, not just intellectually, but experientially, um, not just being able to affirm principles, but to be able to say that they're true for us, that we have, have chosen to build our lives. T to know means that, right? To, to take a step with respect to something that you're building your life on it. You believe it. It's your firm conviction. Uh, it is true for you. When you get to that place, what happens is that there is power in the seed of truth to liberate you and to set you free. The truth of God breaks the chains. The truth of God opens the prison doors. The truth of God splits the cloud and brings the light and the power of God to your life. Like that's, the devil has bound you down with lies. He has chained you up with lies. He has enslaved you with lies. And it is the truth of Christ that liberates you and sets you free. You know all the lies of the adversary. And most of them all centered around yourself and prioritizing yourself and satisfying yourself and, and, and making sure that number one is always taken care of. It's always focused on you. And those are lies from the adversary that ultimately bind you down and steal away the life that God wants to give to you. But we know from the truth of God's word that real life isn't found when we focus on ourselves. Real life is found when we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we build our life, like Jesus said, when we build our life on his sayings, we're going to be like that individual who built their house on solid bedrock on a firm foundation and when the storm comes you know your life won't be wiped away it's not going to be a massive wipeout for you because you've chosen to stand on something solid something immovable and that's the truth of god listen there's um you're never going to regret you will never regret building your life on the truth of christ it has the power to liberate you and to set you free, it has the power to bring to you new life. Let's choose to not only know his truth, but let's choose to believe in it, to let our convictions be rooted in it. And when that happens, the freedom is going to come like you've never experienced before. Father, thank you for the words of Christ. And thank you, God, that when we believe in the truth, God, as you speak it to us, as we see it, as it's revealed to us, we pray, God, that there would be that great supply of power to liberate us from the lie and to strengthen us by your Holy Spirit. Father, we're so thankful that, 
this is your plan for our lives. And we pray that we would align ourselves around the truth of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.